Good morning crew, we're back on the F1 car today. And if you did miss my last video, we did implant a Hellcat engine into a Fox body with twin turbos and it's all mounted in there. And honestly, there's a ton of information in that video if you wanna go watch that one. But today, we're working on this thing. Today we got our Miata rear knuckles and we get to make this thing a little bit wider, at least in the rear. The seat still needs a little bit of work. We're gonna leave that for after. I'll be the first to admit, I do not know a lot about suspension geometry. That's why I went with a Miata knuckle. That way we could use Miata brakes, Miata spindles, and from the factory, this has to be pretty close to a decent suspension point. So we're gonna work with this, and eventually if we have the opportunity to upgrade or change to like a CNC style knuckle, we'll rebuild something afterwards. Now, this is 9 16 so we need to drill this thing out to 5 8 I don't know if I have a 5 8 drill bit here. Well, it grabbed on me, and look at my $40 drill bit already. That's what I like to see. Cut it back just a little bit, maybe. Maybe we'll be able to get some holes in with that. Ah, that's annoying. I'm high speeding it. It's already foobard. Here we go. Good as brand new. Don't mind the mess, this is my plan. I'm gonna take two on the bottom here. This is my rough plan for the bottom. These little spacers are just gonna give it more range of motion that we can use. And then the top one, we're just gonna build a little plate to come out and then weld our two arms to the top of that plate, I think. This might be a very unorthodox method, but it's the best I can come up with in my mind. What I did was I drew a mark where like basically the center line of the diff is on both sides. I used a tape measure to go across that line to make an imaginary line here of where parallel with the front is going to be. So essentially this is square with where the front of the chassis is supposed to be and it's out far enough to where the wheelbase is gonna be 72 inches roughly. Um, and then I'm gonna put this one underneath because this is how high up I want the bottom of this knuckle to be to give us like a three inch ground clearance on the chassis. And that's how I'm gonna build my arms on both sides for the lower part. Like I said, I'm no professional here. That's just how I'm gonna do it in my mind. And that's the simplest way. And then any fine tuning adjustments, we do have right around eight threads both ways on all the heim joints so we can kind of tilt it and play with it afterwards. Rear bar, 14 inches. Hmm. Yeah, I forgot that it wasn't welded on there, huh? Bottom one mounted in the rear. We're gonna work on the front one next. These are actually like five eighths time joints. And then these are like for one inch tube, 120 wall. It's definitely overkill. And I just got what was readily available to me. And it had to be in the budget. Cause when I started this, I had a budget in mind. I've already gone past it. So it is what it is now. But this box of 30 Heim joints, was like eight or $900 Canadian, which was a lot of money just in Heim joints. And I don't even know if we have enough. So yes, can it be lighter? Probably. Does it need to be? Probably not.
You might have noticed in that last clip I used this wrench, and that's because I couldn't ground through the rubber bushing, so I had to use something that connected here to the chassis so it would ground for my welder. Now my plan has always been to use the Miata hub because it probably has good geometry from the factory. So I'm using the top mounting point and the bottom mounting point from the factory basically. If we need to, we can change it with this rubber bushing for like an aluminum bushing or uh, a bearing or something. It can always be changed afterwards, but we're gonna build some arms that uh, weld directly to this piece and then heim joints on the other end. And I'm gonna try and make them a little bit wider and I don't know for whatever reason, I just feel like a little bit wider might give it a little bit more stability from doing that. So let's build two more arms. See where my wrench got grounded through. Also, the heater's on full blast. It's minus 30 degrees Celsius right now. My neighbor just started up his truck. I guess this is the moment of truth with our suspension. I don't know much about suspension, geometry, all that stuff. This doesn't have a tow link on it, so I don't think we have to worry about um, like bump steer in the rear. And our Heim joints are facing this way, because if you look at any other Formula 1000 or IndyCar, anything like that, all the Heim joints are, are this way. And I'm told it's for um, like detachment purposes. Like if you hit this, you want it to rip off kind of deal. A little bit scary, but that's the way it is. I'm gonna try and lift this side up and see what happens now. That travels pretty straight up and down, holy. But it does look like, it does look like we might be getting some negative camber when it goes up. I can't really tell and I won't be able to tell unless we put a level on it, but really it's only gonna move this far. It moves pretty friggin' nice though. All right, kind of stuck in there. It says we're at 0 0.23 degrees right now. And if we go up, yeah, it's negative cambering out when it goes up, but also oh very slightly. Like we're at one degree there and two degrees all the way up there. Now, and I know it's a little bit of talking, but I did learn something from our test. So if we move this upper control arm down to somewhere here, let's say, then we actually get the camber that we're looking for. We're gonna have to extend the arm a little bit, but as it moves in this radius right here, it does want to camber in. So what I think I might do is I might mount to this upright bar here and add another upright bar over here. And now the other thing I learned is that having both bars mounted here, when I do adjust the Himes in and out because they're not parallel, the bars actually, the mounting points either shrink in or out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna mount a Heim on this side of this bar and this side of this bar. So this top bar is adjustable on its own and then this one will be adjustable in and out. Is it gonna be perfect? Probably not. But is it gonna work? Probably. I'm so sorry work that I've already done. We can technically test this thing with one Heim joint in it. It's gonna be fine. It'll do what we kind of want it to do. For whatever reason, I can't just like read a book or watch a video or whatever and learn how to do something. I kind of have to like be hands-on and do it in order for my brain to process it. That's just me, that's how I do things. That's why you'll see me make mistakes just so I can fall forward basically. We're sitting at 0.36 and if we go up, we are definitely turning in the right way. So right there we're at 2.7 degrees. So it's not, it's not an aggressive camber gain. Uh, let's just say we get one degree camber for an inch moving up. I don't know if that's good or bad, but it's moving in the right direction versus what it was before. I can shorten the length of this upper bar on the pivot point. So if I move these pivot points out this way more, it will also give us more camber gain as we go. I feel like the front is probably gonna be more critical than the rear, so I'm okay with having, let's just say two degrees of camber here, and with two inches of travel, we go to four degrees. So I'm gonna be fine with that. Not that I know anything about suspension, but we just gotta build our second arm now with two Heim joints on it so it can be adjustable. A lot of explanation for not a lot of work. What I'm doing here is I'm building a bracket not only to reinforce the rear tube, 
to our first bracket, but it also allows us to mount the second arm's outer heim joint. So my first revision didn't include this, and since the bars are not parallel, when you adjust the length of the arms, the distance between the two mounting points actually changes. So if we were to adjust those upper bars, it wouldn't fit anymore. And basically, this is what happens when you're horrible at pre-planning like myself. It's okay though, I'm sure there are a few of you out there like myself that would rather do something five times to learn how to do it versus reading a bunch of books. I just, I just can't do it. Honestly, pretty proud of what we did. So I actually mounted a heim joint here and here. It doesn't want to twist at all, which is perfect. And when it goes up, it does get some negative camber. So this is the droop because sitting on this is normally ride height. So somewhere around there and then that much travel upwards, which is a ton for what we're doing. The other side should go a lot smoother because all we have to do is replicate this side now. Just dreading doing it because it's a lot of work. And today's the first day in a couple days that I've actually been able to get out here because my heater can only keep up when it's like, minus 20 celsius or something and you know what let's talk about the stupid heater of mine it's totally big enough at 45,000 btus it is throwing a code on the high limit switch so instead of throwing parts at a 15 year old heater i'm actually going to get it replaced next week this was actually an ongoing problem for a couple of years now and i just didn't realize it because i heard the heater kicking in and out and i just assumed it was working correctly and it just wasn't big enough but what was happening was the heater would get up to temperature it would say that it was too hot it would shut down keep the fan going so i assumed it was still working but then it would just blow cold air to keep itself cooled down and we did have a cold snap where it got down to like minus 40 fahrenheit and obviously the garage temperature dropped as well so, so it just wasn't enjoyable to be out in the garage with all that cold metal so i could last an hour maybe two hours and that's why progress has been slow lately another 40 dollar drill bit we will probably ruin in the first 20 seconds Didn't wreck it, nice. Side two should be as easy as mounting the tabs in the exact same place as side one, and then making the bars the same length as well. I'd like to bring up another subject in this build that gets easily overlooked, the cost. With Formula 1000 cars selling for 40,000, maybe $50,000 US for a used car, and my initial budget being maybe quarter of that, it's really easy to get lost in suggesting really high-end parts. Obviously, if budget was no issue, we would just buy a Formula car and the series wouldn't exist. But now that we've established that, I've spent countless hours searching the internet for possible parts I could repurpose, like the Miata Knuckles. They're obviously not the most ideal part to be using in this situation, but it's going to give us the best possible car for the price with my given skill set. Don't get me wrong, I love and appreciate everybody's suggestions, I just can't go out and spend $5,000 on a specific part. I've made a terrible misjudgment on how many tabs I need especially if I want to go to the front as well. So I haven't found a good place in Canada to buy these weld on tabs, but there's two here, two there. So two, four, six, eight. There's a couple here, that's 10. There's some on the engine, that's 12. Some down here, some down here. I need two more for up here and I need two more. So I've highly misjudged how many tabs I need. The rear end, Definitely coming together, definitely something that it, it's starting to make the look of this thing for sure. We've got our Miata front knuckles. So the next time I'm out here, we can start building on the front too. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll be back out again when I get some tabs. I don't want to make tabs out of scratch just because these are all laser cut and I know the exact length of them. The one when I make them, they're not exact. Love you guys. Make sure you subscribe for the next video. Peace easy. Get that V. We should get that motor running soon, huh?